is there an objective reality, or is the world inhabited as image, imparting meaning as images, therefore existing ontologically as media, when we perceive reality, we see the preceding reality, we are on a surface asymptotic to these images, and we can infer the depth of the world as the interior, within the image, and yet in simulacra, we see that the real is a convex referent to its interior, inferring to a world external to images, images transport us to the strange attractor of meaning that emerges out of images, they are not within the world, images are the world, there is no world in images, because we see only the surface of the world, which is perceived visually, and physically, as well as mentally and through the psyche, we encounter that the world emerges from images, and that images in and of themselves are the simulacra which catalyze the world we live in, as occurring via facets of implicit ideas that depart from what we call reality, and yet this challenges our smooth apparition of the world of forms, we assume that the world is an external object to the world of images, and we assume that images in and of themselves, are a way of touching, or in effect, capturing the reality of the world as it is, or was, and yet we will obviously find that there is no past, that an image of the past is of a place that no longer exists, but exists within the conjugation of the image as it exists in the mind, and we can see these realities as appearing to us, not unlike dreams, but actually emerging from both allegory, metaphor, and dream, which are emerging from the world but do not in fact exist within the world, because that suggests that our simulacra of ideas and images is in some way apart from the world as it seems to be, and that is where we see a direct overlapping idea of both the world as a convergent realm, wherein which the suppositions which create for us the world, in time, in images, that create for us both meaning, and capture for us, the sense of images, which for human beings is about the ability of images to read as reality. When we encounter an image of ourselves in a certain time period we encounter the profound reality of a non-real world, that contains for us the real objects, attitudes, fashions and ideas of human existence, but it is in a sense covered by the image, as a form of truth which appears to lay below the supposition of objects, and is in and of itself, not real, so that images in and of themselves are the world, there is no present world we will not be able to find it, as it were, in time, the present is noticeable as absent from the form of the world as it existed or may exist, the conformity to the world of images is from our inability to distinguish the world as apart from images, and this is a very primal form of reference because as a reference in and of itself, it achieves a meaning via the conformity of the image to fit within a context of seeing, as an image, and so the same way that a cotton t-shirt, could contain images, the mind as a memory may contain itself as images, or the world as information is best abstracted primarily as images, they seem to contain the largest consensus to what reality was, before the image, before the world of perspective illusion, and of the world as it emerges into shapes, and into the forms which describe a world that is lived within, it emerges nonetheless, as simultaneously grounded via the contention of earlier images, constructed by human beings, paintings depictions etc., depict a world which is flattened as simply an image, and which would suggest that before the world is inhabited, it lives as an image, and then seems to be embodied as an observer, only in the more modern depictions, which would include with photography the very real foreground of reality, as attainable, and therefore it becomes to us the same as image, the image is the world as it exists begs for us the question, does the world of meaning impart as anything other than images, and does image contain the extreme subduction zone, between the world of mind, and the subconscious which exist as the same embodiment within images, for us that is why the world of images contains both the body of thought and the body of feeling, the feeling which is subconscious as a modality, is rationalized via the objective identification of the meaningful real or objective, then identified in images, we begin to see how images construct for us not just reality, but a way of thinking about reality, a way of believing about what is seen as real as objects which impart meaning as credible, and lend credibility, as many historical images or as in a court case, there is no greater evidence than a video or an image, which today we know can be fabricated, but or implicate trust in images allows us to constitute that a world as image is more real, than even a personal account, in culture photographs of UFOs, or fairies were lent to media, as proof, or as depiction of the world of both phenomenalistic reality, and phenomenalism in and of itself, creating in people a belief, even if today we know such images are most likely constructs, it is nonetheless the fact that or implicate trust in images, therefore lending to us the idea that world is perceived through images, describes for us, a way of understanding the world as it is, in actuality, and our assumption is primed, we are more or less to assume of course that the world corresponds to the world as described by images, but this is not the case, at least, not strictly. 
There exist for us the phenomena of the world which seem to have escaped images, the world which to us, is only observable as a reconstruction, as a way of reconstitution, and by the very act, is only a reproposing of the world, a reconfiguration of events, and of order, which then reads for us that the world is images, sequentially, through time, depict for us the very thing we all experience, and therefore constructed the simultaneously embodiment of the world as it was inhabited, and hence it is via images that we today impart into the world, and we would come to believe that these experiential images were in some way different or other to the world of images as they are depicted within the mind, this constitutes for us an idea that reality itself was either verifiable as images, or in some sense, substantially less real, this overwhelming shift to the contextual power of images, of being able to remember loved ones who had departed, of being able to re-inhabit events that were blurred in memory, as if they were again, real, this overwhelming power to the image, lends to the word of forms, the same contextual authority to believe that the world which is outside of us exists is more real, than the experience of the world, which is the experience of something which is not there, there is no present, and yet we are present within it. This is for us the missing phenomenalism that when encountering images, we felt in a sense, as if reality had been entrapped, as to say that in images remains a form of truth more subjectively meaningful, than a dream, or a make-believe occurrence, and yet we are simultaneously without the idea, that the world of images is in and of itself, the only valid interpretation of what is real that for us visual experience, is the place where a sort of magic seems to take occur, where a legitimacy is met, as actuated in truth, between the world of forms, and the world of formlessness, that a world that is in a way unburdened by the power of images, is incapable of departing into real and non-real, and with the overwhelming power of images we again are left feeling that the idea of itself as an image, must for us represent the overwhelming locus of both meaning and of identity, thereby creating the world of substantially rational man, which requires evidence, and proof, as the very meaning whereby which we further impart that through the world of images, of photography, the realm of both history, and of reality, become catalyzed as active, via the convergence of these object images, we begin to enter the submergence of the world of forms, as existing in two states, one which is inhabited, and the other which is in images, the one for us which distorts our perception is in the idea that the world of images is more powerful than the world as it is, that a picture perfect life, is in fact the same thing as a good life, despite our learned experience, which does not agree, a dream of a sexual encounter is for us as real even if upon awaken we are met with the experience is a dream, it is for us in it real, as the real world event, and ascribes that in and of itself, there is more subjectivity which is inhabited by beings, who in the awareness of the profound truth of the world as images, and inhabit those images, abiding by the world of images, as real, creates the unending juxtaposition, between the moment as it emerges in the material present, to the way in which if it exists at all, it therefore exists as images, the experience beyond which there is no image, is for us, in a sense, gone, and yet we are missing from the world, having been replaced by a world of images, we nonetheless find ourselves captured as the Native Americans, had said when encountering photographs, that they are demonic, because they steal the soul, by rendering both time and self static, which of course it isn't, we nonetheless create both history, empirical science, as well as a natural world, and the Baudrillardian simulacra, which is the very same thing, as the awareness that the world is through the processes of human experience and interactions, occurring more and more as a referent a symbol or a sign, and in such a way as given the dimensions of representation, of actuation, as well as abstraction, therefore it is easier to infer that the reality of human beings, is as much an artifice which emerges from simulacra, as from the subjectivity, of individual lived experience, and here we encounter the next great truth which occurs as a result of images, the self becomes a camera, an observer, the subjectivity of the self is therefore imparted as existing within the world, in the same way that the camera does, but in truth we find the camera is in and of itself a simulacra of the image, the camera emerges as the eye, and the image which then becomes known, is both the internal mind, as well as the external world and this for us creates the observer, it creates the distinction of a point of reference, and exists therefore at a point within the once existent world of the image, hence we can see that the eye contains in itself a form of camera, it is by way of these syntactical and contextual congruencies which for us then imparted into the world the idea of the conscious experiences existing within a curious world wherein a divide between the observer, and the sense of the real world, create for us the idea that there is a bicameral reality, a buffer, a frame, a permeable membrane, 
a physiological lens existing simultaneously within the world and within the mind, a reality which contains two objective truths, the subjectivity, and its separate ideation within the space, as two different inhabited realms, and we again would find that the world as it emerges from the convergence of images, and of technology, of photography, simultaneously shapes our very selves into historical being, and existing in a modern sense, as existing within the world of mass media, and images. How powerful is this sense of the world? For us this creates our identity, it creates our sense of the world as a series of sequential or as with memories non-sequential events, which are the place for identity, which is to say that the notion of a person, as an individual character, as an identifiable component in the real, a self, ideates as a way of imparting into images, names, and subjective ideations of the world, of models of ethics, modalities of social norms and dictates that impart the dimensionality of identity politics, and the locus of subjective ideation by way of narrative, this is convex to the hyperbolic notion of the individual, of the consumer, and we find the power of this relationship to the world as it either is, or simply as it appears to be, the very departure of which is first order simulacra, images and archetypes inhabit this environment, it is where the movement of order, not only actuates itself as real, but is where the actual kernel of truth, of embedded value into the world of images, becomes the very exposure of the image. At that moment light codifies something into the vast tangle of paths which trace its form, to the very thing that we are, and as such the collapse of reality, occurs when human beings can no longer comprise images, where they become, essentially disactivated towards meaning in an actualized capacity, that they begin to no longer inhabit images, they begin to fade back into the imagination, sinking and slipping out of the world, descending from the surface into history, or as time, this idea for us traces that the very nature of the world, as somehow not physical or material in nature, but rather, as illusory, and unsubstantiated, is when we begin to understand that there is no real or non-real, that the simulacra, is in end of itself the departure into the overture of the multiverse, the very notion of real becomes at a distance to what we meant by real, even 100 years ago, because the idea of images are so profound, we enter the phenomenalism, whereby which we can see that in a world of images, there is no such thing as time, simply the actuation of will as it inhabits the subjectivity within sets of images ordered events, sequence, effect and cause, and the part that most perplexes us in postmodernity, is the utterly maddening suggestion that seems to enter the world, that not only is there no real world, but there is actually no world at all. No world which is outside the multiverse real, and in the post-human narrative the activation of the multiverse completes for a trajectory into the cosmology of information as it represents the ultimate record, or image the light trapped on the surface of a black hole. As we again are faced with questions surprisingly intuitive, can information be deleted? Can the events occurring within this object actually describe events in the universe? We will explore this question in depth and look into the understanding that is allowing us to probe the mysteries of dark energy, dark cosmology, and the multiverse, as the idea of light, of images takes us into the realm of information, and at its highest density, punches a hole clear through the fabric of the cosmos, the singularity, in this way we might better to understand the realm of modern human awareness, as it extends beyond the rationality of a bicameral awareness between subjectivity and physical embodiment, as this still holds many of the powerful assertions of the first order simulacra, the environment of images and archetypes, the idea of hyperreality is imparting into commodification by way of its gross hyperbolic expression, its superfluous nature of perfection, which regards the image as a consumption object, establishing itself as a commodity of consumed value, that intended to appear as its attraction, its seduction, it is itself post-commercial and late capital artifice, because it is the value of the current contemporary value system, though its arrival marks the late to end trajectory of its expression, in its processes of articulating a reality, that exists in history it seems to create a dissolution of the boundary condition between what was natural and real, what was in an aspect, as which was function becomes an articulated boundary between the historical formalism, and the hyper form of expression emerge, so to extend beyond which class or category is no longer viable, is the end of that formalism, such as information flowing autonomously through a network mark the end of social sphere, pornography represents the end of sexuality, hypermedia represents the transcending objective calm modifiable reality, etc., the representationalism, symbolism, and referent, becomes the trilateral integration of the form, beyond which as it occurs, is post, that is the post-human, and as this is in a sense the hyperhuman, 
the simulated human, the human articulated to its aspect as a form of constitutional perfection achieving and surpassing the human being, which in end of itself, must culminate in the artifact of hyperhuman, for example post-human beings, representing this idea, is the holotype mechanism in the taxonomic categorical consumption of the identity, by in a single expression integrating into itself at once a flawed or formal idea, and achieves its hyperbolic geometric symmetry, by formulating the end of such an expression, as in either disbanding its formalism functionality or even as a form altogether, the taxonomy is in end of itself the end of natural order, as it was no longer expressed alone through nature's form, but rather as the meaningful taxonomy, a categorical and class-based system of forms, as they achieve a non-real ideation of itself, based itself on either a perfected or exaggerated form of its ideation, the ground becomes a perfectly flat surface, the idea of a sphere is a perfect sphere, geometric perfection exists as simultaneously possible and rather does not negate its form, but insists upon the holotypic expression, hyperbolic, abstract, in a sense in becoming a caricature, or an over-depiction, wherein the idea of its mirage-like appearance, creates the dissolution of its reality, of its base seriousness, to which is again repurposed as the sterilization of the form, from its subversion to a system of total induction, this neon ideology becomes a sort of miniaturization of the inarticulate human being, rendered to its essential ideation, as a set of features which are if not controversial, at least not to the future to the past would seem to be reductionist in its approach, articulating a greatest common denominator of its features, because the human is in a sense truncated to its expression at onset, and hence becomes static in the wake of its post-human form, it is explorable not as a reality, not as a lived experience, but rather as at some level to us, or at some distance to us, wherein which the totality of its form, becomes a non-threatening idea, of its own prowess, to have at once gone beyond its form, and further, to render into its place, the very model of its ideation, which in the sterile future, could be, this very system of hyperreal is understood through the western disciplines of natural science which created the taxonomy of species, naming the natural world along categorical, class, genus, phylum etc., the system was a representational environment of natural history, many museums and institutions of research or education maintained such a taxonomy in their natural history departments keeping a file system which contains its holotype, a preserved version of the creature, stored alongside its related forms, a once living museum of dead and preserved specimens depicting the taxonomy, a hyperform, or an idealized, even perfected idea of its holotype is desired in order to depict a holotype which exemplifies the features of its kind, in this way we arrive at the need for the expression of a surreal human being, which is embedded within, and expressed as culture, the idea of a human representational object which imparts for us the shared trajectory of meaning, is an acquiring a sort of definition, in this way, a human being is as modeled, a perfect static trajectory at its emergence, not fully embodied as real until the end, a hyper-real version of this ideation as an embodiment, is the ultimate destiny of our shared collective state, and thus we should assume the natural order to comprise of this sort of system, an idea of shared human ideation, as the only meaningful goal in describing the state which we are to become, we should, in essence, only liken ourselves to a form, that we then become it, the human being as a system of identity, consumes all of itself, and simultaneously reassimulated their constituency as a shared expression, constituting the idea of the post-human, as the form of human which we are to create when we possess the power to articulate the human being to our own designs and purpose, liberating him from any limitation, and liberating him to determine not just his appearance, but rather his aptitudes, his extensions, his history, his memory, in a single sense, a human being as enters its simulated archetype, becomes viable as a model to which we would append ourselves, not simply within the mechanism, but as authors of the objective experience, of the world inside and outside the form of images, the virtual reality, which is now for us more real, than the expression which emerged homo sapien, upon its emergence clothed itself in the knowledge of its duality, good or evil which was then reconstituted via his expression of technology, in his expression of H plus representing the achievement over his form, as his form, endowed with the capacities of a supernatural agency, a mechanism, an identity adopted like a substrate, like an architecture, which achieves a greater actualization for those who then can also embody our shared collective holotype, H plus TM.